What's up YouTube, Reed with RCG Car Reviews here and behind me is what I consider to be the jack of all trades. This is the 2016 BMW 328i and is BMW back? Let's take a look and find out. So about the exterior of the 328i, BMW really dressed up the F33 series when they redesigned it for the 2016 model year. Starting off with the front end, as you can see, they added some really nice looking LED headlights under the base halogens, which in my opinion was something that needed to be done long ago. The little halogen lights that they had on the base model cars really didn't do the 3 series justice, and it just, the LEDs dress it up a whole lot more. Moving around to the back end of the 328i, they added all LED rear tear lamps. And why they got rid of that going away from the E90 generation of the 3 Series, I have no idea. But the tail lights are very premium looking. You also have your LED third brake light in the top of the rear window. You've got your twin exhaust outlets at the back of the car. They're mounted on one side and they are black chrome, which are really nice because whenever you uh, accelerate heavily, a turbo car, turbocharged cars tend to blow a little bit of turbo set out the exhaust and the black chrome tips hide that very nicely which is something that I wish more automakers would put into thought. Now, moving on to the wheels of the 3 Series. These base wheels are miles better than what the old wheels used to be. They, the old wheels were just this simple five spoke design that looked like something you'd find on a Honda Civic hatchback or something like that. But these new wheels are very premium and very upscale looking. They are wrapped in Continental Conny Pro Contact SSR tires, which are their run flat tires. Not the grippiest tires in the world, but they're economical, they're quiet, and they get the job done. Talking about the body lines of the 3 Series, they're very simple. It doesn't have quite as much curve and stance as the old E90 series did, if you will, but it does have a nice elegant sense to it. It's got very fluid body lines, very crisp, and very clean cut. That's the, that's the best word I could use to describe the exterior of this car. It's very clean cut and smartly thought out. You've got your LED turn signals in the, in the mirrors, which are great. Now coming into the interior of the 3 Series, the very first thing you'll notice is how driver oriented this car feels. The center stack is shifted towards the driver, which is very nice. You've got your screen up at the front, which is tilted towards the driver as well. Your iDrive controller falls right where your hand would be. You've got this really nice little electronic shifter here, two cup holders in front, which is a huge improvement over the cup holders that popped out of the dashboard of the E90 series. I was not a big fan of those. They just spilled stuff all the time. But these, they're decent size, they're big enough to hold your big old American cup for whatever you want. You've got a little storage area up in front of the cup holders as well as your dual zone automatic climate control with all of your adjustments there. You've got your stereo controls as well. You've got your HVAC little dial right there, power door locks as well as your hazards and dual air vents. And the air conditioning in this car is exceptional, absolutely fantastic. You've got your really nicely polished faux wood trim kind of a, a smoky black wood which is very very premium and goes well with the black on black of this car and it kind of complements the white stripes in the seats as well and talking about the seats these are not the leather seats these are just their faux leather but honestly it really isn't too bad especially for an entry-level BMW it's very nice and easy to look at comfortable pretty cool they kind of do get a little bit warm um, and they take a while to cool off but anything takes a while to cool off when it's 97 degrees outside in Texas the gauges as well simple well laid out very easy to read great font and I love the orange lighting at nighttime that is a huge huge it's it's one of those things that you wouldn't think makes a huge difference, but it's so easy on the eyes, but still really easy to see as well. You've got your little infotainment display down there in the uh, in the gauge cluster. The models that come with navigation, of course, have the longer screen down there in the middle. But this one being an entry level model, this is all you get, and it tells you all you need to know. You've got your automatic headlights going over on the driver's side. Moving over to the door panel, all soft materials in this car. I haven't really found any hard plastics that are just disgusting to speak of anywhere. Um, 
Of course, there are some hard plastics, being that this is more of your entry-level BMW, but they're very nicely grained. They're not rough, scratchy, or anything like that. You've got all four power windows, automatic up and down on all four, and you've got a really nice leather stitched area on the door, padded up top, leather stitching in the middle, and leather stitching on your armrest as well. Moving on to the steering wheel. The steering wheel in this car is exceptionally good. Um, a great little steering wheel. You've got your red stitching there, and you've also got your paddle shifters, which are really cool to use. You've got your uh, multifunction controls over here on the left or the right side of the steering wheel, and your cruise control on the left side. Uh, very nice and meaty steering wheel, but it has a small diameter, which really adds to the driving confidence of this car. So overall, the interior of the F33 series might not be the nicest interior in the world but it's very well thought out and very well done and extremely well executed and build quality is top notch i haven't heard any squeaks or rattles on a 21,000 mile car so far so so far so good great job on the interior bmw alrighty guys so let's start it up smart key access foot on the brake and it starts right up and let's take it for a drive all right, so very first thing you will notice when you're starting off in the 3 Series, especially here on this kind of bumpier park area, is how well dialed the suspension is. It is stiff because, of course, it is it is a sporty little car, but it's not unbearable. You've got plenty of ground clearance to get over limbs or anything, uh, anything like I just had to do. And it's very supple, and you get one solid bump and then that's it. You don't get any residual shock or anything like that, which I really respect about this car. So let's go ahead and pop it over into Sport Plus mode with your driving mode selector. Put it into manual shift mode on the 8-speed ZF automatic. And we'll do a little bit of an acceleration run here and see what we think. All right. So that was a run to about 60 miles an hour and you can see I was going around that turn there and the car didn't bat an eye. This thing handles phenomenally. That's why I chose the phrase jack of all trades because it handles well, but I'll kind of tie all that together at the end of the review. And the sound of this motor, it's just the little two liter twin power turbo four that uh, I'll add the power specs into the annotations, but how did they get a four-cylinder to sound that good? I have never in my life heard a four-cylinder that can sound that good. I'm sure it's piping in some fake sound through the speakers like BMW does, but honestly, on this car, I'm okay with that. I was not a huge fan when I heard that the F30 was going from the naturally aspirated inline six to the two liter turbo four, but man, is this a good engine. This has totally changed my mind on a turbocharged engine. It sounds amazing, which I'm sure there's some electronic help. Whatever, get over it. Cars are moving to turbos these days. I don't like it. My daily driver is an 07 Mustang GT. How much more American does it get? But this thing is, I'm, I'm understanding why people like these things and I really, really like it as well. It sounds amazing, returns amazing fuel economy. I've been getting about 28 miles per gallon driving like I drive for the past three or four days and it's sipping fuel the transmissions phenomenal so as far as driving and the powertrain goes it is excellent now going around corners in this car Wow 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 it is a base model 328i no adaptive suspension it's on some of the worst all-season tires that I've ever had the displeasure of dealing with and this thing is so composed and so well-mannered in the bins that I just absolutely cannot believe it. It is an excellent, excellent, excellent cornering car. But whenever you want it to be, it's super comfortable. So let's see about that power one more time. Revs to 6,500. Man, it sounds so good. When you're idling down low, it's kind of got a little bit of like a Subaru growl kind of which is really cool it, it kind of changes tones down low it sounds like a li little grumbly little four-cylinder like determined little thing and then when you rev it out it sings like that inline six used to 
and you just cannot beat that the sound that this engine makes, especially coming from a four cylinder. I would like to add an aftermarket exhaust to it if I had the opportunity, but of course, being a, a loner car, that's not possible. But the exhaust really does have a nice little growl. It's got a little valve that does open up and sounds great. So now that we're done kind of hooning around a little bit, let's pop it back into drive, put it into comfort mode, and see how it does. Putting it into comfort mode, you can instantly feel the drivetrain kind of relax. Whenever you're at a red light and you put the car into Sport Plus mode, you can kind of feel the whole thing shudder a little bit. It's really cool. A lot of people might think that sounds weird, but you can just kind of feel the car change personalities. And going around this bend here in comfort mode at about 60-ish miles an hour or so, the road manners are amazing. The ride quality is great. Mid-corner bumps don't upset it at all. It just floats right over them and keeps going. But driving it nicely, well, one more corner, why not? It just loads up so well. The steering is kind of numb, I'll be honest, but it weights up so nicely. It is amazing how well the steering it behaves itself for an electric power assisted steering system. It is very impressive. But I would like a little bit more steering feel, I'm not gonna lie. Transmission, whenever you're ripping on it, shifts instantly. It's that eight-speed ZF automatic that we've all known to, to love. Best torque converter automatic I've ever dealt with. Um, and I've dealt with some pretty good torque converter automatics. And this one, this one is amazing. Pops off the shifts very quickly. But as far as comfort goes, the seats are very comfortable. The driving position's great. You've got great visibility out the front. The hood slopes down nicely so you can see right where the front of the car is. Side mirrors are plenty big. I wish they were a tiny bit bigger because it is a little easy to catch the back end on curbs if you're not careful. Um, but rearward visibility is great. Uh, front visibility, like I said, is amazing. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of, and that's this car in general, is the headlights on the entry level 3 series are not great. Um, I did drive it back about 45 minutes home in the dark last night and out on some country back roads and it really didn't inspire a lot of confidence. The high beams were okay but the low beams were not all that great. The fog lights really did help. They're nice LED fog light but Part of my OCD really it irks me when you have these yellow base looking headlights and then you've got the really nice crisp LED headlights that just or the fog lights that just throws me off for some reason. But it is just completely blown me over this car. It is amazing. Um, I see why people buy these things. I did drive a 2013 BMW 328i uh, back when I had my 2013 Ford Fusion and was kind of starting to think about uh, getting rid of it. And it really, uh, that car, it was lacking. I've driven the E90 series several times and then now driving this one. This one is very close to the E90. It's different than the E90. The E90, it was a little bit more sports oriented but this one I'm not wanting more sports orientedness and I'm really appreciating the added comfort that they gave you uh, with the F30 generation but that 2013 that I drove it it did not handle like a BMW it had plenty of power same motor as this car obviously and made a good noise and went great in a straight line but when it came to the bins, it just kind of fell flat on its face. It wallowed all over the place. The rear end didn't feel dialed into the front at all. But this car, it feels like one connected unit on the road. And I really, really appreciate that. It feels all screwed together. The suspension is great. Perfect, perfect blend of ride comfort as well as sporting ability. A lot of people just get in a car, oh, that's comfy, let's buy that. But something that a lot of people don't consider is whenever you need to make a tight maneuver, like yank out of the way if there's an accident in front of you or something, you don't want a car that's gonna wallow all over the place and possibly risk rolling over or something like that or skidding out of control or whatever the situation may be. This one stays planted, it stays sure of itself, and the steering just Super quick to respond, instant. I absolutely love it. All right, we've got this little intersection here. Let's go back to manual and sport plus and do one more acceleration run just for the heck of it. Ooh. Got 
got a little wheel spin there. And that's those uh, Continental Connie Pro contacts doing what they do best, and that is nothing. But aside from the tires, this car is excellent. Do yourself a favor. If you are in the market for a small sports sedan, whether it be brand new or pre-owned, do yourself a favor and drive this one. I think it has plenty of power. Of course, the 335 is going to be faster and that will be more fun, but the fuel economy that this car gets is amazing. I've been driving very aggressively in this car and it is returning 27.2 miles per gallon and has been doing so all week long. Took it like on a 110 mile road trip maybe last night and burned an eighth of a tank in the car. It sips fuel, super comfortable lots of fun when you want it to be and just an all-around great car and that is why I call it the jack of all trades is it because it encompasses everything that I like in a car and I know this is all my opinion you can take that with a grain of salt if you want to but it encompasses everything that I like in a car and puts it all together fast well I'm not gonna call it fast it's very quick it's about a 5.3 0 to 60 time I believe it's a quick car, sounds great, rides supple when I want it to. I can throw it around a corner and it doesn't bat an eye. The transmission is extremely quick and it's very, very quiet out on the open road. And in my opinion, it just does not get much better. So do yourself a favor. If you are in the small sports sedan market, please drive a 328i. Don't count it out because of the first generation of the F30. BMW has really woken this car back up and given it some personality and I am so thankful that they've done so and because of that I am going to say the ultimate driving machine is back. Thank you all so much for watching this review. If there's any questions you have on the car leave them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to get those answered for you. I hope you all have enjoyed and take care and we will catch you next time.